Back Maxi presents Turning Beach Sand into Pure Silicon Dioxide. So what we want to start with is 150 grams of sand. Okay, as you can see, we take some HCL and measure out about 100 milliliters of it. So now we transfer the HCL to a hot plate stirrer and we're going to dissolve the sand's impurities into the HCL, one of them being calcium carbonate. And this will produce carbon dioxide gas, so you're going to want to do this, you're going to want to add the sand slowly. We also add a boiling flask to condense the HCL vapors. Now that we have our acidic sand, we just wash it with water. And here's a time lapse of me washing the sand. We want to get it to obviously about pH 7 to get rid of all the acid residue. Here's a little intermediate product of crude silicon dioxide with some black dots in it. Now what we need to do is we need to transfer this to a paper plate and dry it. We need to dry this because we have a step that involves reacting it with sodium hydroxide. So here is the purified sand when it's dried. And our yield is about 140 grams of the crude silicon dioxide. Okay, so the way we're going to purify this sand into pure silicon dioxide is to start by weighing 80 grams of sodium hydroxide out on a scale. Next, we want to transfer it to a stainless steel crucible because otherwise it'll eat through almost any other kind of crucible. I guess you could do it in a copper pot, I guess, but who has those, right? <laughs> anyway, we transfer 60 grams of our crude silicon dioxide to the crucible and mix it in with the sodium hydroxide. Next, we just heat it up and we have to make sure that it gets above 330 degrees Celsius so that the sodium hydroxide can mix into the sand and react with it to form sodium silicate. And I'll tell you what we're going to do with that to form silicon dioxide later. Here it is after it's been on in the heat a little bit. The sand may look like it hasn't dissolved yet, but eventually it all will. So here it is when it's almost stiffened up and almost all the water is gone. And now to get it out, you sort of want to get it out quick because it hardens like glass. <laughs> and I had to use a hammer eventually. So now we just transfer all of our product, our sodium silicate and excess sodium hydroxide to a beaker. And we dissolve it in about 400 milliliters. Do your best, because it's a little hard to do. Next, we just got to filter it to filter out the insoluble impurities. And transfer it to a vessel that you don't really care about, as this will heat up and the silicic acid formed will stick to the glass. Now we just measure out 25 milliliters of sulfuric acid and drip it into the solution slowly. Listen to the sound. This is really cool. So what's happening is actually it's forming a gel which is a sort of gelified complex of silicic acid and it's sort of unknown whether or not the silicic acid will decompose into silicon dioxide on this step. We could very well still have silicic acid, so our next step will be filtering it. Okay, so here it is transferred to a filter setup, and we just wash it with water. And I transferred it to a toaster tray, and now I'm gonna load it into the toaster uh, at on toast, and that's probably about 475 degrees for around 25 minutes. So here's our crumbly and rocky product that I'm just gonna break up now. 
So our yield is about 40 grams of this silicon dioxide. And our yield was about 57%. Now what are we going to use this for? We're going to use it to make silicon dioxide thermite and also to make magnesium silicide. And I hope you guys know that I'm really thankful for all your support and thanks for watching. Bye!